Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash just no mill. In today's episode. Secret meetings and other fun things. MIL gives care package to husband when both of us are sick. JNMIL strikes. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Secret meetings and other fun things. I'm writing this because I'm at a loss. My DH and I took a vacation with JNMIL. Clearly our first mistake and we both agreed it will never happen again. To summarize, she was rude and cruel the entire vacation and we had no space to ourselves. She was so mean, in fact, DH had a panic attack from the pressure she was putting on him. She screamed at me in the middle of a theme park in front of my kids. She called me fat. Told DH over and over again look I'm being nice to her like you wanted. It was a mess. We're back home, thank God, and she texted DH demanding a meeting with him about the vacation. Only him, though. Solo. Arguably 90% of the issues she had were with me. So I'm not sure why I'm excluded. My theory is that she's going to suck him in and try and fluff him up. Like all lovely JNMIL she refuses accountability for doing rude or cruel things and is incredibly rule the roost and has enmeshment issues. DH is getting better with his spine, but he loses his edge when I'm not there to encourage it and support him. Do, do I show up with him regardless? Show up and surprise them both? Text her and tell her I want to meet with her solo as well so I can finally hold her accountable? DH already agreed to this mess without consulting me. How do we handle it without it turning into a mess? It's already looking like there's no winning. She tries to have super secret conversations all the time with her son to justify her shitty behavior and I'm ready to scream. Please help. I want to do something absolutely crazy. Update, after a ton of deliberation I have decided that I am going NC with JNMIL from here on out. I explained this to DH today and he took it pretty hard but ultimately understands. He's still going to their meeting which will without a doubt be a mess. People who have to deal with JNMIL can see these people for who they are but he hasn't made that realization yet. And I've learned no amount of talking on my part is going to convince him otherwise. After years of brainwashing, I think he has to see the writing on the wall himself. He's going in with a plan but I give it about 10 minutes into their talk before he realizes nothing is going to change. He's dead set that he's going to fix her behavior with this one meeting and it hurts to have to watch him learn that lesson in real time but at a certain point I have to let him make that mistake and see who she really is. I did sign us up for couples counseling and he agreed that he needs it so we can work better as a team and learn how to navigate her behavior. All I can do is remove myself from the equation for my own mental health and be there with the resources to help when he gets pushed into the dirt. Thank you for listening. She is intentionally separating y'all, which will affect your marriage, your children, your entire family unit. Your husband needs to understand what she's doing and the damage it's causing and will continue to cause if he allows this behavior. First step is marriage counseling. This is a must. You need backup. Second step, no more secret meetings or secret conversations. She is a threat to your marriage and because of that she doesn't get to communicate with her son only. She lost that privilege. If she feels the need to discuss her horrendous and offensive behavior displayed in front of your children, or anything else that excludes you and divides you and your husband, he responds with let me discuss this with my wife and get back to you. Period. Third step of she is spending time with your children alone, that ends now. And whatever time she's spending with them is either temporarily stopped or cut way back. Your children are seeing and hearing their grandmother mistreat their mother. Would you allow your mom to treat your husband the way JNMIL treats you? I hope not. Step 4 is something you can start now, but will require counseling. Of course I'm talking about your husband. Is he witness to his mother disrespecting and mistreating you? 
Does he shut her down every single time? If he doesn't, he needs to be. If y'all are at her house and it happens she gets one warning. Mom you won't speak to my wife that way. If it happens again we are leaving. If she responds rudely, or if it happens again, y'all get up and leave. I don't care if you're in the middle of dinner, get up, get your kids, and leave. She needs some serious training slash conditioning slash behavior modification. I hope you'll keep us updated. Jamil has honestly lost the privilege of being treated like a normal, friendly, member of the family. She is absolutely a threat to your family unit, your marriage, and this needs to be taken seriously. Good luck! The only meeting DH should go to is with a therapist and marriage counselor, to give him the tools to extricate his mother's talents from him. To help him become a husband and father, instead of the meek little boy being ruled and abused by his horrible mother. I know you said he agreed to this meeting, but we're allowed to have a good think about decisions and change them. If I were you, I'd cut her out of your life and your children's lives. He could send her a text saying, Mom, you were horrible to my family, especially to my wife, so I don't see a reason to meet with you before you reach out to my wife and apologize to her. The part where she screamed at you in front of the children is especially disgusting to me because this is something children should never witness. It's damaging and they will never forget it. My MIL likes to jump on my DH about things when I'm not around. Talk to your DH and solidify that you are his partner and you are a team and a single unit together. Text her back saying, if you would like to talk to US about what the vacation we are available to meet at local cafe on this date. Don't go to her space, don't let her ambush your DH. He needs your help since he's clearly stressed, but he also needs to be there for you. When she comes back with, no, I only want to talk to DH. Come back with, I'm sorry, but we will only meet with you together. We are willing to discuss whatever with you, but it will be with both of us present or not at all. Hold that line. She'll either back off or accept the offer. Divide and conquer. Oldest play in the book. She knows as well as you that his spine gets soft if you're not there. Under no circumstances should he go alone. Really neither of you should go. This is unnecessary and playing her game. But that's up to you, and no matter what you choose it's got to be neither or both. Do not split up. You're right, there's no winning. So stop playing her game. Neither of you go. If this is to apologize for the way you acted, we should both be there because you owe us both one. If it's not for an apology, neither of us are coming until it is. It's called triangulation. That's what the secrecy is if they can tell one person one thing and someone else something else to get what they want then that's what they do. Secret conversations in triangulation. He should call her and say I want to give you a choice mom either Opie comes with me or we don't have the meeting at all. Those are your two choices your only two choices if you don't decide I will. MIL gives care package to husband when both of us are sick. Last week I came down with a really bad cold. I felt horrible but DH doesn't baby me about it and assumes I can go on with normal life like him. Over the weekend he became sick from what I had and was just having an awful time dealing with it. He's not able to just get out of bed and go like I am. Today is Sunday and I am currently still fighting the same nasty cold as him but I have to go to work. I have two jobs and while he stays home and cleans on weekends, he cannot handle the stress of having two jobs like I do. While I was gone at work today MIL came over with groceries and a care package just for him so he can feel better. I don't know why I'm so upset but I was sick with him and as his wife isn't it my job to take care of him when he has a tiny cold? Not his mom come and jump to the rescue like I wasn't taking care of him well enough? I'm gonna all day feeling like garbage to make a living for us while she comes into my house and decides to meddle again. You don't have a MIL problem. You have a baby man husband problem. First of all, if he isn't taking care of you, then you don't need to take care of him. He is a grown-ass man who can't make you some soup and tell you call in sick. 
You've been sick for over a week. Maybe if someone took a minute to help you, you wouldn't still be sick. You shouldn't have to deal with it and work. Take a sick day. Also, don't kill yourself with two jobs. He can't deal with a second job? Welp, you can't either. Marriage is 50 50ths. Your marriage is very unbalanced and it makes me angry for you. No, it is not your job to wait on your man baby hand and foot while he has a cold no worse than yours and you are working two jobs and he could never handle the stress of two jobs. WTF. You say you're feeling like garbage, maybe that's because you have a respiratory infection but don't call out sick like you husband, not because of guilt you aren't doing your performing your womanly duty to take care of your sick hubby. Yes, you have an annoying JNML, but, Opie, she's not the worst issue in your marriage. Not overreacting to Mill necessarily, but definitely severely underreacting to DH's BS and probably deflecting some of your feelings about that onto her. Why is your DH such an enormous man baby? To be honest, it sounds to me like you are resentful that you have to work two jobs and your spouse doesn't. And also resentful that you have to work while sick and your husband gets to stay home. The MIL bringing him a care package, and not you, is what's tipped you over the edge though. And, and that's justified resentment BTW, OP, it's not fair to you. But the solution is to talk to him and work through it together. Pretend the care package was for both of you. Eat slash use as much of it as you want, the whole thing, even. Thank her for being so thoughtful to bring it over for you both. Seems like this cold is bringing a lot up to the surface? You seem a little resentful of your husband and that he doesn't have that same work ethic as you. The fact that he's going to his mom when he's sick only seems to make it worse. I would say maybe have a conversation with him about how you're feeling, and not just about you cold, but about everything and see what happens. I'd be more bothered that she cared when her son was sick, but didn't make the same offer when you were. I think that's the part that bothers me. He said we were sick and she immediately didn't hear the part where we were sick, only her son. JNMIL strikes. Well, I figured for a while that it was only a matter of time before I was posting on here and now here I am. For context, my husband and his three younger brothers were homeschooled after my MIL had a bad experience with the public school system concerning her oldest son with a mental health condition. Now, back in January, DH was preparing to leave to basic training and the night before he left, FAL, who I'm also not a fan of, insisted that he come to men's group at their church. DH folded and went. We met at Jamil's office and I was going to hang out there with our three children while he was gone. Fiel walks in and almost literally shoves a paper in my face and says fill this out while we're gone. Upon examination, it was an application for his church's private school. I am very much anti-established religion so I most definitely did not fill it out. For some background, my oldest son is not DH's biologically, though he's in the process of adopting him. So, legally, school is solely my decision at this point, though I do include DH and only DH in the decision and we had no issue with public school. When I didn't fill out the application, JNFAL and JNMAL threw a fit to DH until he convinced me to fill out the application to keep the peace, though I was not happy about it and I made that known. Fast forward to these past couple of weeks. Issues have come up a few times with this school as there are things my son is being taught at a young age that I don't agree with reciting Bible verses he doesn't even understand, calling indigenous people Indians, etc. So, for this and a few other reasons like commute and cost, I pulled him from the school. Paid our last tuition and enrolled him in public school. Jamil was pissed. She has been blowing up DH's phone and the things coming from her and JNFIL are unreal. She is telling him that CPS will be called on me for neglect, that I can't raise the kids, I'm a liability that I've lied to him about multiple things, including being an EMT before we met, the list goes on. Then claims my son will not make it in the public school he's thriving in, that he will be bullied, and that we are setting him up for failure. Well, a few days ago, I find out from DH that she has gone behind our backs and re-enrolled our son in the private school I just unenrolled him from and they let her. 
Even D.H. is fed up with this. When she called him about it, he told her that our son is enrolled in public school and if she has an issue with it, she should talk to me, which she now will not do under any circumstances, not even to check in on my kids or ask about my son's first week in the new school. She refuses to speak to me and only speaks to my D.H. I really just needed to get this all off of my chest. I'm beyond frustrated with all of her shenanigans and childish antics. The narcissism and need for control is almost shocking. Almost. They both also hate boundaries and will do everything they can to bulldoze or triangulate their way through them. Now that DH sees this, he's just as angry about it as I am. I would send the school an email so you have confirmation in writing asking if they could advise how your child was re-enrolled and could they please provide a copy of the paperwork it was done from. I wouldn't explain the reason why you want to know or anything about that, simply get them to advise you how it occurred and then make a decision from there. If they come back and advise it was done by MAL or FAL, my next question would be can you please supply a copy of any and all paperwork that was supplied stating that they are the legal guardian slash s. Maybe a signature was forged. So, so your husband caved to his mommy to keep the peace and then you caved to him and put your children in a school you didn't want them to attend? Why? BC his parents said so? You're an adult. You don't have to do what they say. If they threaten CPS you stop contact. Anyone who threatens to have my children removed from me is someone I will never have contact with again. Why do you still interact with these horrible people? Also unless she's your child's legal guardian, there's no way she can enroll him in school. So either she's lying or the school needs to be notified that she's crazy and has no right to enroll your child in school. And may be reported to the school board for illegally enrolling children. I hope you aren't responsible for tuition BC your MIL enrolled him against your wishes. Your real problem here is your husband not being able to stand up to his crazy parents. And telling his mommy she needs to talk to you instead of him? What? No. His no is the same as yours and he's just throwing you under the bus so he doesn't have to deal with her. Can you contact CPS ahead of time and let them know what is going on? Give them a heads up that your MIL thinks public education is neglect and that she's been using cost to threaten you. Maybe double check with the private school and see if they forged your signatures to get DS re enrolled. I would also suggest muting notifications from them, but not blocking them, so there's a record if they leave a crazy voicemail or text. Basically, just keep records if they escalate and you need evidence of harassment for a restraining order or why they shouldn't have grandparents' rights if that's a thing in your state. My one worry with CPS is that if I contact them ahead of time, it could look somewhat suspicious in a way? Like I'm trying to cover for myself doing something wrong slash neglectful in the event that she does contact them. Yeah, that's an immediate restraining order. Can the school be reported somewhere because they accepted Jamil's re-enrolling your son, where your JNMIL has absolutely no authority? How could she enroll your son when she is not the parent or guardian. That doesn't seem legal. There should be state agencies that monitor schools, even private ones. If they are accredited, contact their accreditation agency. If not, call the State Department of Education and ask them. Consider contacting a lawyer and getting a cease and desist order. You should never have filled out that application. Protect your child at all costs. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.